Good morning, everyone. Hello. So, oh, good morning. It's uh, Thursday morning, the 13th of August. Hello. We're meeting half hour early today. Hope you can all find us. And today we're in um, Exodus 19, which is interesting again. I feel like I never want to stop reading this Bible again. I just love being in the word and um, for some reason God is letting me have much more understanding during this season and I appreciate that so much. I feel, <laughs> I just feel privileged. There's my alarm going off so that I'll start the study on time. I just feel privileged to have his word, to be able to talk to you guys about it, to pray with you. And um, so thank you again for being there and wanting to do this. Uh, today we're going to be um, just reading <clears throat> Kind of just, this is the chapter just before the Ten Commandments are given. And um, where God is revealing himself in supernatural ways again. He's so good. My, my blessing cup from Phoebe. And I will see her later today. And apparently she has colored her hair. <laughs> Um, so, this is right before the Ten Commandments are given, and um, then I will see you tomorrow uh, live from Fair Mountain later in the day, and I know some of you can't uh, join us live because you're working, which is a good thing, but please feel free to comment when you do get to see it. And I love you all. I'm just packed up in the car, ready to go on our journey, our fun time. All right, so here we are, chapter 19 of Exodus. In the third month after the Israelites left the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. When they had departed from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him out of the mountain, Say this to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You've seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. That is such a gorgeous scripture um, imagine this he said you've seen what i did to the egyptians and how i bore you on eagle's wings i bore you i put you like on eagle's wings and brought you to myself now therefore if you will obey my voice in truth keeping my covenant so there's always an, an if and a stipulation that we seem to forget. There's always keeping covenant with God. I wish that this, this should be the theme today. As a the person sharing with you, um, if I had a theme, if I had an outline or you know a page that said this is <laughs> the main bullet point, it would be keeping covenant with God. Keeping covenant with him is important. You, There are things that we as, as Christians who have lived in an age of grace, which I don't want to get sidetracked, but I believe that um, this 
the fullness of grace that he's let us live in, that we've known him in, could be shifting. But um, there's like a little bit of a laziness that we don't understand that there's a covenant that we have to keep with him in order to obtain and dwell in his promises. And that's a hard thing for people to hear. But there's an obedience that's required that isn't just Balderall or Old Testament or Old Covenant. There's something of uh, being in his presence and seeking after him. There's always, if my people, like it says in the Old, Old Testament, will humble themselves and pray, I'll heal their land. But there's always the ifs that we think we can just gloss over and we can't. So <clears throat> I want to just say that if you will obey my voice in truth and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own peculiar possession and treasure from among and above all peoples. For all the earth is mine. All the earth is mine, he says. That's in verse 5. I love that verse, and I love verse 4 about being born up on eagle's wings. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, Barbara. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, consecrated and set apart to the worship of God. These are the words you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses called for the elders of the people, told them all these words which the Lord commanded him. All the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and believe you, and remain steadfast forever. Then Moses told the words of the people up to the Lord. He wants us to remain steadfast forever. Good morning, Melissa. Steadfastness. Lord, we ask for that steadfast spirit to come upon us today. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us. And the Lord said to Moses, go and sanctify the people and set them apart for God today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Be ready by the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the cloud in the sight of all the people, and you shall set bounds for the people round about, saying, Take heed that you go not up into the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. No hand shall touch it or, or the offender, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. Uh, I just, I researched a little bit on the trumpet blast because I wanted to know if it was supernatural or if it was natural, and I found both. More, more leading to the supernatural, that it was a loud trumpet blast. Um, so Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified them and set them apart for God. And they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready by the day after tomorrow and do not go near a woman so they were to purify themselves for two days in the third morning there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled so the so this had to be supernatural because uh, remember how many people there are gathered at the foot of the mountain. We live in Redding, and there's a Mount Shasta here that's it's large. If that many people were underneath it waiting for God, and there was a loud blast that all of them could hear, and that it was so loud that it made them tremble. So that would be like if someone blasted a trumpet right in your ear, or right in the same room as you. 
Then Moses brought the people from the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Lord, we want to go up. We want to go up. Lord, here we are. Here we are at the foot of the mountain this morning. Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke. The Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like that of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. So the whole mountain shook like an earthquake, and the and it was wrapped in a in thick um, smoke. And so I was saying as we were starting today's um, broadcast that God was revealing Himself again in supernatural ways, and how. Um, how could you deny what was happening here? I think of everything that was so obvious, wasn't it? And then I think today, what what are the obvious things that are happening and signs and wonders that we cannot ignore, we cannot afford to ignore even one of them, good or bad, someone gets healed. We cannot afford to ignore this. These are signs in the earth. This is God's to us. This is his I'm with you. I posted a scripture yesterday. So, so like a Sunday school verse. So easy to remember. I Remember I'm with you every day. Something you can tell your grandchildren. Remember, God says I'm with you every day. And um, there's we're still in this age of grace where he is allowing um, us to access him easily. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. We cannot take this for granted. Verse 19, as the trumpet blast grew louder and louder, so it's deafening now, Moses spoke and God answered him with a voice and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. So it was like a grand um, entrance. No wonder when kings and queens come through and the, the processional of the president is heralded by music. This was God touching down on the mountain. And so the trumpet blasted. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said, oh my goodness, can you imagine if you were Moses? What if that was you? What if you had been tried and tested all those years? And you and he was old now, and he went up to the top of that mountain. And the privilege of being him. Yes. Oh, you mean COVID, Gail? You took uh, advantage. Yeah, I see what you mean. Took it for granted. Yep. I know. Until COVID, I never, I never had anyone tell me I couldn't go to church. All my life, every weekend, I was assembling with the brethren. I don't remember a time when I wasn't going to church. There probably was, but I don't remember any time missing. Um, I mean, of course, here and there, but not like for seasons. And then for, that's why it just felt so strange to me for someone to tell me I couldn't go through the doors. I, I remember being at church once and realizing I couldn't go into the sanctuary in the last few months. It was the weirdest restraint that I felt. God, is this your restraining, or is it is it evil restraining? What are you doing now? What's happening? The Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. So he, he cannot be seen by the rest of the people, even though they purified themselves, and they came up to be close to him. And let... Also let the priests who come near to the Lord sanctify themselves for God, lest the Lord break forth against them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself charged us, saying, Set bounds about the, the mountain 
and sanctify it. Set it apart for the Lord. Set it apart for the Lord. Sanctify it. You know, women of God, uh, my bullet point number two, if we had a piece of paper, set yourselves apart to the Lord today. Sanctify yourself to the Lord today. Purify your heart today. It's just communing with the Lord and telling him, I surrender. God, sanctify me unto yourself. Of course, positionally, we know this is true. But don't you know he wants to hear that you want to draw near to him? Um, yes, scales living very easily seeing um, Mount Shasta and knows what I'm the visual that I'm trying to bring, yes. All right, so sanctify yourselves. Then the Lord said to him, Go get down, and you shall come up, you and Aaron with you, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break forth against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Okay, because there was something that was going to be happening, and God needed to give it just to Moses. So he um, said, only you. And um, so uh, that's the end of chapter 19. And chapter 20 um, is so amazing. I'm going to be looking at this over the next two days, because tomorrow I won't necessarily go into chapter 20, but we will be on um, at 10:30 ish gathering at prayer mountain at 10 and then um, I will uh, put on my Facebook um, exodus something you know at 10:30 so um, let's just pray today if you have a comment or a prayer request or a thought could you type that up and um, I'll give you a commercial while you're doing that. See this thing? If you have sinus problems like I do, like breathing, always trying to open my airwaves, or if you have lung issues, this is a simple solution that I found out about. Let me see if I can get it. It's, the company is Mockins, and it's salt. It's a salt inhaler. So inside of here, is Himalayan pink salt that we just put in through here. It's like a salt shaker opening. And then you just breathe it in. And uh, you can even kind of taste the salt. And it goes down in your lungs and it comes up into your sinuses. And they're like, it's like being in a salt room, um, which is like a therapeutic place. Like if you go for massages, they now have salt rooms. But it's also like being by the ocean and breathing salt air. And it brings opens up your lungs and it um, opens up my sinuses. So um, you have to do that kind of inhaling for about five minutes and Penny and I do it. She does it for more for her lungs. Um, people use it to treat asthma. That's what we're trying to get her help with. And then I have just chronic ear popping sinus issues for dozen years or so and so um, it's helpful though I um, I really it I think with shipping it was like twenty dollars so it's like a twelve or fifteen dollar item uh, on Amazon I guess any color you want we just chose gray but you might think that's a good idea for you or someone that you know all right, so I don't see any comments here for prayer, so we're just going to pray here before my day starts driving. Safe journey, yes, thank you. And Gail has our dogs. Oh, good. All right, so praise you, Jesus, for this day. Um, we want to say that we thank you and honor you and love you. And uh, we surrender to you today. We ask that we could just come close to you, God, as we just 
Thank you, Jesus, that you see our hearts, that we want to have our hearts be purified. Uh, we want to sanctify ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We want to come with clean hands, pure hearts. We want to worship you. We want to love you. We want to come without an agenda. We want to come because you're good and you, your presence is awesome. Lord, I pray that we could carry your presence with us everywhere we go today. That you give us the heart of the Lord and the encounters that you want us to have. I praise you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, God, that you are real and true in this age of grace that we have been privileged to live and walk with you in. If you are shifting the age that we are living in, God, as I believe that <clears throat> days are coming closer to closer to your return, I, I pray, Father, you teach us how to live and shift with you. I ask God that for me and for those that are here now or watching later, that we would not take for granted what we have in you and that we would remain thankful and watchful, persevering, patient in trials as we are all in trials and tribulation right now. God, we thank you that you can be found at the foot of this mountain, Lord. I pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. And tomorrow when we go to prayer mountain, I pray for a continual and significant outpouring of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you go before us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, yeah, safe journey and God's purpose be completed in these unusual times in Jesus name. All right. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.